It's a sprawling estate on the edge of the city centre. You don't have to look hard to see many of the signs of today's recession. In St Anne's last year, there were more than 5,000 recorded crimes. St Anne's is an area where it appears everyone knows someone who's been a victim of crime or who's seen it happen in front of them. Growing up in St Anne's in the 90s was, it was home, you know? I'm my mum's boy, I'm the youngest out of five. I got a big family, like cousins, I got a hell of cousins. My mum was a single mum, like even though when times are hard and scrimping and scraping, she always put her youths first in it, and that's, that's just my mum's character. We could that now. <laughs> he didn't give me no trouble, none whatsoever. So he was a kid you could put down to play and you'd just play. But where Remy's was concerned, it was just boisterous. Out of all my brothers, it was like we was like kind of the closest. At times it was we was inseparable, you know what I mean? We was always together, Remy and Dan Dan. We didn't really have much, you know, it was just just a, a typical kid's room, you know what I'm saying? I used to hold the top bunk, he used to hold the bottom bunk. This was our place, man. People thought we were twins because obviously my mum and my bros used to like buy his like same like bomber jackets and same crepes and say, you know what I'm saying? With a similar age, if you if you didn't know us, you'd think we was, we was twins, you know what I'm saying? Bigger boys had chores, they had to do chores, they had to clean the cooker, they had to wash the skirting boys, they had to make the beds. Where the other two got away with it because they were the babies. Remy would never do the chores. Remy would just put the Uber on the stairs and go missing. I was out on the, on the front playing, you know what I mean? Kirby, you know what I mean? Get the bikes out. I used to annoy him, like when he's trying to get to sleep, I, I was annoying, like, you know what I mean? I'd be, I'd be just up all night, just rapping and that, you know what I mean? Till I fell asleep. <laughs> we had no care in the world. Just kids being kids free. Drawing pictures and watching cartoons on ITV playing cops and robbers and hide and seek. We would count to ten. But before we got there, we would open our eyes and peek like, ready or not, here I come. The good old days. I'm talking mad games of Dobby. Bike rides, but we only had one bike, so my brother gave me croggies. Joys of laughter, everybody on it. Come to think about it, we was out there in the rain, sleet and snow with no care in the world. We could have been five blocks away, but when my mum called us for dinner, we was hearing her voice. That Saturday soup the frost of my frostbite, like serious talk. The elders used to ride round in the biggest whips, give us quits. We thought we hit the jackpot, so it's straight to the corner shop. Pick a mix, Premier League stickers and pogs with the littest ting. It's about using our imagination. How could you wrong the vision? I remember conquer picking, heads and volleys in the garage, just constant kicking. We was mini men. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. We was growing at a rapid rate, you know what I'm saying? Due to the fact that of some of the things that we was seeing outside on the roads and, and seeing from inside the, inside the house and, and hearing as well, like hearing certain conversations. Not, it's not like what normal kids see and hear. Dan Dan started playing football, Remy was into cars, and as I got older, Dan Dan went the football way, but Remy took the road way. I started getting into trouble. He built a name for himself, so it was, you know what I mean? Remy was, was a household name at a very young age in St. Anne's, you know what I'm saying? But to me, it's still like the name. I didn't see him as what he, the, the status, what he, the character, what he built, you know what I mean? I just seen him as, yo, that's my bro. We'll have scuffles, we'll still go head to head on pro evolution, you know what I mean? It's still the normal dialogue what we normally have, you know what I mean? It's still him telling mum, telling my mum to tell me to shut up, it's still that, you know what I mean? Even though he was out here doing what he was doing on the road. I got a knock on the door, it's one of my uh, brother's friends. Something's happened to your brother down at the pub. Neighbours have told us they heard a loud argument on the street here. Then the people involved moved inside the pub where the teenager was stabbed. I've gone inside the pub, I can see everyone just, just like in a panic state. And then boom, I've just seen my brother on the floor, like, it was almost like he was sleeping, it was like he was just sleeping, like, blood, just covered in blood though, like, I'm, I'm like, I was numb, like, I didn't even know what to do, like, the place just went silent and it was just me and him in there. I was there for about 20 minutes, then finally the ambulance have come, got to the hospital, pff, flatline, you know what I'm saying, like, his doctor saying, yeah, he didn't make it. And from then, that's, that's the beginning of, like, yeah, your brother's gone, isn't it? Your brother's is dead. 
throughout the day, shocked friends and relatives have been laying floral tributes and leaving photographs in memory of the dead teenager. Remy Samuels was only 17 years old. To see Remy on a slab, it, 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 I can't even explain. The owl of St Anne's was in mourning. It, it is like a tempin, but when he played ball, ball he, we, the, all the stickles were knocked down but it brought the boys and me really, really close. There's always going to be a hole within the family structure in it. Like people was coming to my mum's ask, uh, giving the family condolences, just, just genuinely upset. I've learnt to sit in the sadness now and just, and just embrace the sadness and just, and because it's temporary in it, it's not going to be here forever. But how do you bounce back? as a family, as a family unit. And that, that, shows, that shows the strength and that shows the character that we was able to bounce back after, after such a um, tragic time. There's no limit on, on, on the grieving, it's timeless. I got drawn towards gang, gang activity because I lost family members, I lost friends, you know what I'm saying? And the streets, in the streets, we built a family. Growing up with people who have who've had similar experiences and your age, it resonates like, yo, you're just like me, fam, like, yo, you lost your bro, I lost my bro. Your cousin passed away, my cousin passed away. Your, your, dad's, your dad's doing a sentence, your dad's smoking crack, my dad's smoking crack, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's you're my brother. I trust you more than I trust anyone else. Anybody's got a problem with you, they've got a problem with me and vice versa, and that's how it is. When you're conditioned a certain way in the inner cities, areas like St. Anne's, it's like, fuck everyone, like, fuck the police, fuck anyone on the other side, it's, it, it, it is what it is. They're only kids who want a bit of advice and role model. And if nobody's going to go in there and offer them that, they're going to find that role model elsewhere. As Dan Dan was growing up and as situations occurred, you know, and as things in the community was getting more violent, lots more shootings, a lot more stuff was happening, they was, you know, getting more involved. Because at that time, there was kind of a war going off and them lot was in some serious beef. Prostitution, drug dealing, crack deal, everything going off. It was a mindset that we used to go through, like, yo, this is where we're from and we have to protect where we're from. We have to, we have to represent where we're from. It was just all like, yo, ballad up, bandana up, we're riding out, we're gliding, we're going over there, we're going over there and we're, we're going to find some new and we're going to make them know, like, yo, this is our thing. That lifestyle is only, a, it's a one-way road to a car crash, man. Prison, death, the mental ward, where man, not, man don't even remember their own name, you know what I'm saying, or drugs. <laughs> Playing this tough guy, sitting upright in this hot whip, living that fog life. It looks good on the outside, but inside, I just want to go home. Feeling like I've got to show and prove for the bros that I'm really about these roads when, really, I'm alone. Choices. Voices. Intuitions of these feelings normal. Strapped up with this gap tucked underneath this tracksuit, ready to put in work. It's sad but true, the lacklustre of my potential right now is heartbreaking because I don't want to be here. Feeling like I've got to prove to my teammates, like, check this out. They'll probably respect me more if I said stop the car and let me out, car. This is not me, this up beef. I've got dreams that outweigh this situation I'm in right now. It's cool not to be on it. As long as to yourself you're being honest. Because the real always recognise the real. When you're from it. I got kicked out of school at an early age, yeah, bro. Got low grades. The only job I can really get is something like flipping burgers or something, you get me? Teachers told me, yeah, you're going to prison. You are going to prison. That's what a teacher said to me, you are going to prison. I'm here now to, you get me, to prove wrong. Music saved my life, man. It gave me that avenue to express without being harmful, without hurting anyone, without breaking the law. 
you go there, you do a set, you come out like you've, you've done the Sunday church, mate. Yeah, it's Jar Diggs, a.k.a. Dan Dan. Watch her coming up, I got the yakin' and my cup, I got the weed and I'm a spiff, I got my freezer and my wrist, I'm with him. I slept, yo, Donkey Hill, Marmay and Top. See me right there in the Arsenal top. Like all the talk and argument, blood. Enough niggas in my head like a carnival, blood. As a, as a 16 year old, you're full of rage, you're full of, you're full of energy. No, it's like, it's not talk. Them sets what we used to do back in the day was therapy. It was therapy. This is how bad it is. Big men are stabbing kids. Kids let the cannon rip. It ends in casual is. All for a bag of chips. Raw energy from the streets. Say what I like. Get it out there. Like, fuck whoever's got anything to say. This is what it is. Get clear to the creations from where the pain is. It's the same shit, a different day with the same shit. Oh. Writing for me was almost like having a personal diary, like, but just with, just creatively writing rhymes. Top three grand round there, you better pick me. Soon learn that these streets wasn't truthful. The more living I've done, the more things I've seen, the more things I was around and, and exposed to, the more rhymes. Mm. Mad it up, I'm mad it up, I'm mag it up. They ripped up every draw, the set it on from how they handled it. Beef is watching our mother's grief. Funeral eulogies leave, communities weak. Before you know it, I've got, I've got a whole lyric book full of lyrics. Finally, they've all got their eyes on me. They can see what I can be. Flow diverse like high and green polystyrene box. Rice and peas, a big piece of fish that's nice and steam. Beautiful black skin, nice and clean. And chat to me, rude boy, I can speak. I don't watch TV no more. Slowed down on a cyber feed. Brought some books that I can read. Bookshelf looks like a library. Linked back with my dad after 25 years. Longest game of hide and seek. Internally hide and seek. Resentful want in a life of peace. Ooh. Link back with my dad after 25. Link back with my dad after 25 years. Longest game of hide and seek. Internally I did seek. Resentful want in a life of peace. Still I sold drugs. Paranoid. Hide from police, postcode war, fight and beef with other men that was just like me, but still I got thoughts to bring back the ends. Nothing ain't changed, I still back my friends with knowledge though. Uh, a lot of my pieces kind of touch, touch home with a lot of people because they can see it in themselves, you know what I'm saying? And it, it makes sense to them. That's what makes great artists, the people who can creatively talk about their, their, their mishaps and their downfalls and make it, it, make it into, a, into an art piece. It wasn't really a thing like where I thought about it, it was just, make a video and just upload it, you know what I mean? Uploaded one, uh, got a little got a little views, little comments, people was kind of feeling it and from then it just kind of grew. The Dutch pot, it's like an ornament in the black household. It's older than some of my siblings trying to know. Me and my Dutch pot, I got a funny relationship, big style. I ain't been dreaming three days. I go there when I'm feeling vexed. This alopecia, it's speedily spread. It's the reason why I couldn't keep my dreads. Basically, I got two daughters. As a dad, I'ma make sure I'ma raise them to be queens. Set trends and these man will follow. Stack ends and ball. Maradona can't be down with the breast and stress. Gotta get out this step and step. So we can't be mad at her. She left me. Now I feel like I'm trapped in a blur. Depressed. Jeez. Every day I'm jogging, a jogging. A pair of huge tits. Show these rappers they ain't trapping. They're capping like Tony Pulis. I've been burnt out. I've been tired. Really thought I had this worked out, but I've been really worked out. Plenty of times I said I'm done with it, but still end up sipping on liquor inside this pub again. The whole UK fuck with this country geezer. Can't reel and I could convert a non-believer. That's the testing ground, that's the day the drafts. And if people are resonating with it, then I, I, I get into the studio, I link up with uh, Nick Stez, and then um, we try and build around it, we try and get a, a production around it. So that's like A flat minor 9, I think it goes to... Just goes to C sharp um, minor 9. Maybe the double bass and piano. Yeah, the bass and the piano, that, that would sound absolutely just like a stripped down version, you know what I mean? It's killing you all, so. So, that drink, yeah. Got to go is a tune of our. It basically saying anything that anything that that put, puts you on a downer, let go of it. It's not it has serves no purpose in in in, in your um, in your life. You know what I mean? We we pay too much attention to the to the to the things that drain us. Yeah. I wonder why we're stressed. I wonder why we're depressed. I wonder why we're anxious. You know what I'm saying? So this is all about letting go of the the bad things and 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 being grateful for the good things. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to die a heroin addict. I started drugs at about 17, which cannabis, acid, uh, I progressed from that. 
to the heroin and crack, which I never thought I'd get on. And I was on that for 15, 16 years. Nothing to show for my life. No relationships, because all I wanted a relationship was with drugs. Didn't have my own home. Uh, never had a job. Lost my self-respect, lost my dignity. Everything I was doing was negative. You know what I mean? It was all bad stuff. Just upsetting my mum, you know, breaking my mum's heart and all that. I just had enough. Now, I've, I'm clean from drugs. I help people on a daily basis. You know what I mean? I've got a fantastic job in a detox unit. Because I don't want people to think negative of self uh, or bad about themselves, you know what I mean? If I can help them get out of that mindset, uh, like I've had help, uh, I'm happy and I've achieved something. Life's good, you know what I mean? And when I say life's good, it brings a smile to my face. Before, I could never say life was good, you know what I mean? But life, life's all right. Some people that hear melody first or chords, I always hear the bass, so I was like, dum, ba dum, dum, bass is dum, not. dum, <laughs> ba dum, dum, ba dum, dum. So that's how it kind of started, and then built up. Um, I put some flutes in there. I just wanted like warm, jazzy sounding, so old school, vibraphone. I was thinking like a brandy in a cigar. Do you know what I mean? Like that kind of warmth. This time as well, we was talking about jazz quite a lot yeah. and like jazz style. So it was like Miles Davis, like the Miles Davis um, books and um, John his Coltrane. music, John Coltrane. Mm. So there was that influence, but then what Jar's been through, the reflections, like he's saying, but just also conversations and sometimes conversations that other people bring as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? From the, from the musicians to and then to the vocals as well and the vocalists, the singers. Yeah. I feel like we've captured, definitely captured that live feel, that, that real feel. Well, yeah, it, it touches it touches the core, you know what I'm saying? I feel it's like needing a pasta for prayer. Oh uh, yeah, sprinkle that holy water. It's like my words tripped up and they're falling on deaf ears. They think that I know when death's through. Times are here, I know when death is. Part of this hard journey called life like fresh air. Look like him, him is me. He shuts the door, my baby screams. Yo, this beat's this beat's knocking still though, you know. It's like my voice tripped up and it falling on deaf ears. I feel like people only resonate with the with the vocalist when it's not the case. Mm. The full meal is 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 the man who played the bass, the man who played the who's on the sax, the man on the keys. You know what I'm saying? The man on the drums. It's all it's all one. You know? <laughs> You know, every Sunday we go, we go to grandma's, we go to grandma's house and like the whole family will be there, aunties, cousins. That, that was the spot, that was a link up spot after, after a hard week. Patience. Grandma's place is foundation, it's where it started. It used to all be about being creative with a sample, chopping it up to pieces, make it unrecognisable. But sometimes, like with this, I just found, I just got this guitar loop. And basically it's just looping. It's got all that oldies on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and I just thought, okay, just let it run. So I sit my cousins down, turn the TV off when I'm telling the vision with hella description. My grandma's place is the heartbeat. It had a vibe. I think grandmas are like the pillars of our families, you know what I mean? Like the proper, like, the head honcho, you know what I mean, of the families. So mm -hmm. it was just creating that, that energy for me. Gets paints that picture like how it was for him and it, at, at his grandma's, you know what I'm saying, on a Sunday, you know what I'm saying? It was, I think it's, I think the picture's painted clearly, like, you can, you get that, you will get that feeling, you know, from this tune, if you play it with, from this tune, we get that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I 
I can't laugh loud, yes. My name is Yvette, but know me as Shine. When I was working or anywhere I go, they always tell me Shine suit me better. I love Shine because Shine suit me and I'm shining for Jesus. <laughs> I was born in the country, in Westmoreland, in Cornwall Mountain, they call My mother had 12 of us. I enjoy it, and when my brother going to the field, I normally go with him. He would um, get me a little bundle of wood and put it on my head, <laughs> and we bring it home. That's what we used to cook with, coal fire, wood fire, make up the fire outside, yam, dumpling, banana, sweet potato, cocoa, um, cassava, you don't know. <laughs> Without a family, the home is not a home, really. A family is very important to have. What it's like to be a grandma, I enjoy it. I'm a grandma and great gran, you know. I have seven grand grandchildren and I've got ten. Great. The role of a grandma is to love them, grow them up in the right way, to have manners and respect. As long as they do good, good will follow them. And if you do bad, bad follow you. Heavenly Father, I bring my grandchildren and great-grandchildren before you, asking you to help them and to grow up in the way that they should and keep them safe, you know, look after them and that they may grow up in the way that you would like them to grow up. We've been recording at Fishergate Point, you know what I mean? It's, this is the final stages of it. We're close to finishing as well, so I hope you guys enjoy it. If I made 2K, I'd be like, here's a grandma, like I'm bringing back my mum, but we gotta keep the family tight, keep the legacy living. When Joss sang me the chorus, when he sent me the chorus, he just had that vibe. I was just hearing them jazzy chords and then the steady bass and just like him Yo. sitting over the top. Wrench through and I can see my mommy panicking. I should grip the ting and start shooting like local cameramen. Jazz is ghetto music. It, 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 mm -hmm. You know, it's them same stories, just like dance hall is or Mm. Jungle is or drum and basses or you know it's them it's that inner city sound. Bombarding me with text messages that just don't malice in. I'm cancelling anything that's fucking with my sanity. It's like today when mine are spitting like imagine a grime set mm. and everyone's just going back to back going hard on a grime set. That was them. They was doing a grime set, but it was it was jazz, it was bebop, innit? Cold train will come in on the sax and do his thing. Mm. You get me? You got Miles on the trumpet just going doing a hard 16 on it on his yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's the beginning, that was the beginning, like before rappers was even about, you know what I'm saying? So that just inspired me, like, rah, this is, this is, these man are sick. Straight after Robin Joe, yeah? All right. Yeah, you don't believe I'm worthy of your love. I can say that you just speak the words, this I messed up. It's clear that you believe I'm just not good enough. Feeling on edge. Feeling like an outcast, feeling like a paranoid schizophrenic cop is mad, am I? Supposed to be here, am I? Supposed to be there, am I? Supposed to be happy, or am I? Supposed to be scared? There's, a, there's, a, there's an energy in pureness, in, 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 in honesty, and in, in just keeping it real. Even if it don't look as glitz and glamour to, to the other people, it's still, it's my story, isn't it? Like, I can't, I can't sugarcoat the story. It is what it is, whether it's a good time or a bad time. Musician or artist, they 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 create music to to let off let off, man. Throughout the days, the weeks stress, the days stress. 
writing for me is, is that's what it is. Music's given me a freedom of expression. The creativity, it's an outlet like for my emotions. It's been a platform for me to like talk about all my experiences. You know, sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. When I'm in them dark spaces, it gives me like, you know, it, it, it frees my soul. Music's definitely helped me out, man. Without music, I don't think life would be the same. You know what I mean? Music is everybody's business, and that's how I look at it.